Yo, George, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, my man? Good, good, good to talk to you. Doing good, doing good, and likewise. You're uh, you in Texas? No, I'm in California, in uh, Los oh. Angeles. Okay, okay. So a brief, brief background on you. So you grew up where? Uh, in Texas and um, and uh, in Mass, Massachusetts for uh, high school. Mass. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was, um, Matt, I was in a couple years in Mass and then a couple years in Indiana at a military school. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, shit. How'd you like that? It was good, man. It was a good experience. You know, learned a lot of discipline. Uh, at the time, I wanted to be a pilot, and it was the only uh, high school that had an airport. So I figured I'd, you know, if I had to go to military school in order to fly at that age, I, that's, that's what I was going to do. So that's what brought me there. Uh, how old are you now? Uh, 41. 41. Okay. So for everybody watching, uh, this is George Foreman the third. I mean, what is that what they call you? Three? Third? How's it go? How do you yeah, yeah. We all have numbers. Uh, my dad, senior. Then there's my older brother that's junior. And then uh, I'm the third. Then there's the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. My two nephews who make seven and eight. Okay. So so like when your dad calls you, does he just say three? Like what's he call you? Oh, we all have nicknames. You do, oh, you're Monk, right? Yeah, and I'm Monk. That's right. Monk, right. Um, and by the way, 41, I'm 47, but you look way younger than 41. So <laughs> God bless. I hear that a lot. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When – did you have an amateur background or if so, what kind of amateur background? No, no, I didn't. In fact, when I when I first started boxing, the whole uh, – the, the plan was just to have one amateur boxing match. And for whatever reason at the time, it was really hard to find, you know, a, an amateur heavyweight that had zero or one fight zero fights or one fight to uh fight me just really just based on my dad's reputation because i really could you know i had just started back then and uh but anyway i couldn't get amateur fights so finally i said you know what at least if i go pro then someone's going to show up to make their check you know uh get their check and i don't have to worry about people pulling out of the tournament the night before or pulling out of a fight the night before because they're intimidated you know uh, for some reason. Yeah. so i wish i had an amateur career i really wish well, were you when at what age did you start wanting to get into boxing? Not till I was like I thought about it. Uh, actually, I never really thought about it until I was in my twenties. And uh, when I was nineteen, I believe nineteen or twenty, I was at it. I was at the Lennox Lewis fight when he fought um, Vitaly Klitschko, and uh, Emmanuel Stewart, who we were close with for many years. Uh, I think two or three fights before that, he kept saying over and over, George, give, give me your son, I'll turn him into a champ. And he would say that, and I'm 100% I'm sure he was just joking, but he got my attention. And then uh, I remember when I was at the Lennox fight, Lennox walked by, and I remember thinking, he's not that big. Like, you know, he looks like, <laughs> and I was 6'4 at the time, and Lennox is still big. Um, but, you know, I said, you know what, maybe I could try it and see what it's like. And then years later, I gained a lot of weight, maybe three years after that. And I just wanted to lose the weight, so I got into boxing as a way to lose weight, get in shape. Um, wanted to make it a bucket list thing with the amateur boxing, and then eventually just decided to go pro. And and then me and my dad enjoyed it, so we did that like 15 more times. So. Um, when you said you lost weight, how much weight did you end up putting on? Uh, I had gotten up to about 290 pounds, almost. What, uh, and I what, started. <laughs> what's that? You like so like 40, 50 pounds you gained. No, I gained all 90. So um, I had been in school in California. Um, and then when I was just shy of 21, I moved to Texas. And in one year, I gained like 90 pounds. And then I kept it off for a little bit and finally went to get it off. I was 200 pounds when I moved. Okay. 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 Um, wow. And now you are 6'5", correct? Yeah. Yeah. And two, two, you fight around what, 230, 240? Uh, right now, it's 250 is probably where I'm going to fight now. In my previous career, my first 16 fights, I was anywhere from 231 to 256, but most of my fights were like 245-ish. And okay. now I think I think 250 is the right way. Okay. And for everybody watching, uh, George is 16-0 and 0 with 15 knockouts, right? Yep. Okay. Very. That's – you know, it's impressive. That, that's impressive no matter who you fought. I tell people all the time, getting knockouts as a pro – is in, is, it's impressive, you know, when you have a multitude of them. It's a hard thing to do to knock people out. It is, I believe. No, it's, it's not easy. I know. No, no, it's not, you know. Um, 
<laughs> you know that you weren't in that video when when your that your dad did maybe a year ago where he was hitting the bag and it was clearly somebody else came in and was hitting it right <laughs> that was my uh, my little brother was in that video that was your brother hitting it no 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 my little brother was remember, that was your little brother who took it okay yeah cheering for him <laughs> why didn't your dad hit it he just can't anymore didn't want to why didn't he actually hit the bag out of curiosity my dad my dad could hit the bag so he just didn't want to no he can absolutely still hit the bag no i mean in that video it wasn't him hitting it I don't, you know what i don't know i mean he hits I'm, he hits harder than that actually i believe it but in the video it was like a cut it was like pretty obvious that it wasn't him hitting it and then they cut back to him and i was curious why he didn't hit it because i was assuming he could still crack it my dad he can punch he can punch much harder than what you saw in that video to this day <laughs> wow. it's like it's like it's kind of like um discouraging because I, I don't have that type of power does he still does he still work out yeah quite a bit. that's great I mean, you obviously have some power. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'd, no, I mean, I, I can punch, you know, when, when I really do it. But um, but he, he was special, so no, no, never going to just try to be like, you know, any. I don't want to be like anybody in particular, but I'm definitely not going to like try to force that. that I just, uh, I just dropped a video of, which I, I called it one of the most exciting fights I've ever seen, which was him against uh, Lyle. And yeah, wow. that was a knockdown drag out, wasn't it? That was crazy. And, you you know, showed you, your dad, he showed something he never had to show before, really, which was the grit getting back up. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just kept going. Well, yeah, he said that with that fight, we talked about that one a lot. He said that um, he had, you know, had a lot of excuses in the press why he lost the Ali fight, um, a short count, the, the tight ropes and so on and so forth. And the, I heard um, him say about the water, right? The water was drugged. There's a number of different things, right? And so, um, but then he said, um, "Now what am I? What am I going to say? <laughs> you know, I'm in, you know, in my own country, and this guy's just knocking me down over and over." So he said that he decided I'm either either going to die on the canvas um, fighting, or uh, but I'm not going to die on the stool. That was his thing. He's like, "I'm not going to quit. You're going to have to kill me, wow. or I'm going to, or I'm going to win." And that was it for him. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean that was that was a, an amazing fight, um, yeah, and and you, I guess you were too young to remember a lot of those some oh, of those fights. That, even, that was eight years before I was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but you're old enough to remember the more and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that when it happened. Yeah, I interviewed more not too long ago. Actually, we talked about that. He, you know, he's. I, I think he's digested it now. It sits better with him over the years, but that must be hard to swallow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, nobody likes to lose, right? Especially oh. with the most the most coveted crown in all the sports. So, uh, right. yeah, that was tough. But you yeah, know, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I said my dad had been on the other end of that with Muhammad Ali, so you know what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, losing is a you know. I feel like as long as you learn from it. I remember he afterwards he did the uh, the five guys in in one night, right? In Toronto, that? yeah. Yeah, that was. I don't know what prompted that, but it was it was cool he, to see. Yeah, it was it was really about him um, showing that he had stamina, and uh, everybody had always since the beginning critiqued, you know, said you know he's great, he has decent defense and really good power, but uh, he can't last more than you know five or six rounds max, and so uh, and everybody said with Ali he gassed out, and that's really what happened for the most part, and he just wanted to prove that uh, he had the stamina, so he fought five guys in one night, <laughs> two rounds apiece wild and none of those were actually on his record so i guess they were like exhibitions yeah the to get that sanctioned you had to make it an exhibition there was a couple guys of the of the guys of those five guys i think one for sure but maybe two were guys that he had fought before um mm -hmm. but it was an exhibition exhibition wow wow that was that was wild um so who who's who's trained you if, if him or who who's trained you your your, your yeah. career yeah so i mean all my training has been with my father, um, George Sr. So he trained me for about five years straight. And um, and, then, and then mentored me now, but I live in California now, so he can't train me because he lives in Houston. And then now I have a, a coach named uh, Hernan, who um, he's kind of like, he's the best best trainer you never heard of. And, um, you know, I met him, I've known him for about six years now from New York, the, the Bronx, I believe. And, okay. uh, I think he's an excellent, excellent, excellent coach. Okay. 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 And and uh, so that's who you're with now. And you have a fight coming up, correct? 
Yeah, I mean, I have one coming up. I just had one last week um, in, down in Mexico. Um, right. And if all goes well, I'll do another one on uh, June 26, hopefully. You had one last week? Because it's not yeah. showing up on your box rec. Yeah, it's not up there yet. So you're 17-0 and 0 then? Yeah. yeah. And did you, did you win by knockout with that one? Yeah, it was a the, – the referee stopped it. It was a body shot, and the guy uh, said he couldn't go on. Okay. Have, have you been down as a pro? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was down. There's a guy named Eric Lindsay on my record, and he um, he he, he uh, hit me with he, – he, he played a trick on me. I taught my, my – I had an amateur boxing team in Houston, and it was a trick I taught them over and over and over, and he pulled it on me. Um, but I was able to get up and get him. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it says you in the box track. You both went down once. Yeah. Um. So, what was that like for you? Go. Have you been down sparring before? No, I've never, never. So, what was that? What went through your head when you when you hit, went down for the first time? Uh, it wasn't until after the fight that I realized I had gone down. Um, and to, I mean, technically, I didn't. I didn't hit the canvas. My glove touched the canvas, like caught my balance. Gotcha. Um. So I didn't like. I wasn't. I didn't climb off the canvas or anything like that. But having said that, um, it was. It was just funny because I had gotten, to, you know, I've been used to being on the other side of it and getting the knockouts and the knockdowns. And I see the referee counting my face five, six. And I'm like, why is he telling me to count? He should be showing <laughs> the other guy to count, I swear. And then he gets seven, eight. I'm like, yeah, like, let's go. Like, why, you know, this down. I figured I'd knock him down, you know? And so, uh, and then we got in the clinch and I said, knock me down. And, um, and then shortly thereafter, I hit him with a left hook and got him out of there. That happened to me once. The one only time I went down was in sparring, and uh, I got yeah. hit. You know, sometimes you get hit, and it's like turns black for a second, like you know. Yeah. And then the the coach jumped in, like, "You okay? You okay?" And I'm like, "What? Well, yeah, it's just he hit me with a good shot. Turned out my knee hit the ground for a second. I got right back up, but I had no idea what." Uh, yep, that happens. I was reacting. He hit me with a good shot. Big deal. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't remember a lot of it, man. It's crazy. That is. That is. Um. So you started. You turned pro in '09, correct? Yeah. And then, so it seems like you took some time. I'm looking through your box rack. You took some time off, right? Since, yeah. 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 Wow. To 2012 was your last fight before. Uh, more yeah, I've fought. I've fought 11 years. What What made you stop fighting that time, and then what made you start it up again? You know, at the time. Uh, so I started, my dad started training me in 2008, into 2007, early 2008. And um, he insisted that if he trained me, um, I have to train other people at, the, at our youth center. And I was like, well, what am I going to teach him? I'm just learning. He said, teach him whatever I taught you that day. And mm-hmm. that turned into me coaching uh, boxers four, sometimes six hours a day, uh, five, six days a week for five years. And I realized mm-hmm. I like had a passion for it. The teaching like i really enjoyed it i looked forward to it and so on and so forth and mm-hmm. so um and then the other thing was I, I was coming up in my 15th fight and i felt like you know for the first time i started thinking about my finances based on my fights and um because i had been involved in the business world prior to that and i was like i don't know that i want i don't want to wake up and say i can't pay my rent because i didn't fight you know i never wanted that relationship with boxing Right, and it's great to get the big paydays. No, nobody doesn't want that, of course. But to be, you know, saying I have to fight four times this year, and if I don't, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a financial issue. I felt like I would take fights for the wrong reason. So I started the gym, um, which was a for-profit version of what my dad had in Houston. Um, I decked it out so I could make money. So I would, do, I decked it out so it was the ultimate boxing training facility: two 18-foot rings, 80 bags, sauna, steam room, rainfall showers. Uh, juice bar, physical therapy room. Wow. Um, and nicer equipment than Equinox because I was like, I also want to make money. <laughs> and so I figured if these people aren't into boxing, at least I have nice equipment and nice locker rooms. And that gym, which was supposed to hopefully just break even, be where I, I make enough money to pay my bills between fights, turned into the most popular gym in Boston. And like we won a bunch of awards. And so I said, let's open another one. And we got encouraged to open another one and another one. And eventually eight franchises and i just never had the time to go back and i tried it twice and i like was missing sparring and a few you know things of that nature missing road work because i had to work because i don't want to slow the growth of the business down and i realized i just had a moment and i said i'm not going to do it if i can't do it right so 
tattoo right before COVID was about to start again because I was finally at the point where I didn't have to be in the gym every day. I had time to train, then COVID happened and um, had to get through that. And obviously there were no events. And then after COVID, I kind of started a new gym, um, another gym in California, in Calabasas and looked up, I had the time um, again. And I said, let me, um, let me do this before I get too old. Okay. And I mean, ob that. obviously, you probably heard this a thousand times, but fighting in your 40s with your bloodline is good luck. <laughs> you yeah, know what I, I mean? mean? We should. I mean, I spoke to my dad about it about a year and a half. Yeah, about a year ago. And he said that because I've been training for about 18 months now. And he, you know, he said that, you know, I'll be stronger than I was, you know, at 30. Um, I'll be faster. I'll feel, I'll feel like I have more endurance. A lot of things like that. Um, he's like, just be careful. And um, he said that his physical prime was 46. That's where he felt his best. It was wow. a combination of time, you know, experience, timing, being able to go 12 rounds and all that. So he said, you know, you, you got you got a few years to do it. So be confident. Yeah. I mean, there is something to be said about, like, be, being more, you know, up here, being more mature in light and boxing. You know what I mean? It's like, sport, it, Go ahead. No, I was saying that one of the last like major, you know, con major contact sports that rewards um, technique and accuracy over strength and power. You know, um, like basketball and football, if you have a base level of fundamentals, um, but really great athleticism, you can excel, right? And strength and power and speed. But with boxing, you have to have an outstanding set of skills. Plus, you have to be in great shape, um, but you don't have to be a physical specimen. You know. Um, it rewards um, the accuracy and the skill. And most other sports, you know, no matter how skilled you are, if you couldn't jump that high or run fast, um, you couldn't compete. So boxing is special like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's why you can do it at later ages. That's, that's what it means. Absolutely. And you, you, especially you, you have a lot less mileage on you with, you know, no amateur background starting later. Yeah. So that's good. That's, you know, you know it, it's, as long as I train the way I should, um, it's a plus for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you did you go to college? Yeah, I went to Pepperdine University for three years, and then I finished my degree at Rice University in Houston. What was your degree in? What you get a degree in? Uh, business, uh, with a minor in sports management. Okay. Or sport, basically okay. sports business. Yeah. Um, who is there any? Who have you sparred with that I would know of? Some fun stories or whatever over the years of champions, former champ. Anybody known that you sparred with? <laughs> Uh, I don't think, I mean, I sparred with my dad, so there's one. Um, like, all out? Yeah, yeah, it was, and he was about 64. What is no, he, he was No, he was, he was probably 62 at the time. He's 75 what? now. So, so you guys went all out? Yeah, yeah, in 2008, whatever, however old he was in 2008. And, you didn't um, feel kind of like going all out on somebody 60-something? You know, he was just too tough, mm -hmm. you had to do it? You know, if you if you watch my dad, it's like, um, and I, I'm saying this because I respect him as a competitor and a coach as well, completely aside from my dad. But if you watch him, nobody really goes wild on him. <laughs> like he has a way of <laughs> controlling and stopping your flow and disrupting you and so on and so forth. You clearly can't go wild, so you have to settle and box. And um, he finally pulled up on me and uh, was about to land a hard left hook to the body, like the type where you know you're you're gonna crack a rib. You just there's the timing uh -huh. and leverage and placement was just, and then he like motioned to hit me and then pulled his hand back. And I was like, all right, you win, buddy. <laughs> you oh. got it. So, okay. um, but yeah, so I swore with my dad, but aside from that, I don't think anybody really of note except for, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, Cassius Chaney. Do you know who he is? A heavyweight? He's about to fight for the <laughs> WBA title. No. Uh, he's, he's fighting, um, the, the, the young man from, um, from Vegas, uh, he's really kind of awkward, but gives people a hard time. The bounty hunter, okay. they call him. Uh, oh, the bounty hunter, or that's well, the Michael Hunter is called the bounty hunter. Michael right? Hunter, yeah. So he's Michael Hunter. He's fighting a guy named Castro Cheney, and though whoever wins that will be have the WBA interim international title, not the super one. But anyway, Castro's me and him uh, for my last fight, which is in Can the last fight before this one in 2012 in Cancun. Um, for that training camp, he was one of my sparring partners. 
Um, and now it looks like he'll be a heavyweight champ if he can keep winning two more fights. Uh, are you a student of the, like, do you watch boxing a lot? Have you heard? Uh, yeah, actually, these are his shorts, which is funny. He left it at, left them at my gym in Boston. Uh, yeah, you, you asked, do I watch boxing? Yeah, are you a, are, yeah, are you a student? Man, yeah. Of, like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying, I've been such a boxing geek for the past, like, 20 years now, 20, probably 15 years that um, I'm trying really hard to get back into basketball, but I love boxing. Like it consumes my time and that's really the only sport I watch. Okay. Uh, so who is, besides your father, who are your favorite, maybe top? Your favorite? Uh -huh. Top of, of all time, like dead or alive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, um, man, I love Henry Armstrong. Um, just to see him go and know what he was capable of. Like, you know, here's a guy who could hold the featherweight, I think it was featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight title all at the same time. Yes, and, all at the same time. And go up and down and defend them and wait. So I think that guy, the, I love watching his tapes. He get a rhythm. He just couldn't stop him. Um, I love uh, Roberto Duran. Smooth, powerful, rugged. Is just, I think, the, the, the best balance of all things in boxing, maybe, I, maybe that I've ever seen. Um, and his best years are years that people don't even give him credit for. Yep. So um, I think Sugar Ray Robinson, where, where, where would boxing be without him? Um, I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I, the best quote is you've heard if, if someone said of God, did, you know, sketched a fighter and made a fighter, it would be him. Um, mm -hmm. he, he does everything. So I love him. Uh, I wish he knew how to clinch better. Seems <laughs> like God's hit him behind the head, but uh, he's great. Um, and then the other two would be Charles Burley. There's not a lot of tape on him. But oh. a little bit of tape, Charlie Burley. Yeah, um, I know that. Is. Yeah. yeah, the little bit of tape. I feel like there's just a lot of legends that he would have given a hard time if not beat. And um, so he's he, he's so he's one of the craftiest boxers ever. Muhammad Ali just if you look at his body of work as a human being, and they said, "Wow, this guy boxes as well." You know, um, I feel I I put him in the category of. Um, which I've heard my dad say, the greatest man to ever box. Um, mm, yeah. And then there's so many other names, you know, obviously like uh, Pernell Whitaker, love to watch him. Um, sure. Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya, like great classic boxing in his prime. Underrated. Underrated. People forget about him. Um, there's so many names, but that first, oh, and Joe Lewis. That's Joe Lewis, come on, Joe. Yeah. To me, the greatest boxer who's ever lived. And I always, I talk about this a lot on my show. You have everybody has a different criteria for what's the greatest, right? Yeah. My criteria is in their prime. I don't really look at guys who go way out of their prime. Yeah. Um, and so in, in the prime, the greatest fighter I've ever seen by far was Roy Jones. I've never seen anybody do. Yeah, that. Roy. Roy. You see, nobody. Like, how, how do you not mention Roy? Yeah. But so, well, people get it twisted because they they think about you know all the losses he accumulated later in his career. Yeah, but when he was in his prime, and his prime was quite, it, was, it, was, it wasn't just like one year or two years. It was like, it was like 15 years. Yeah, he was just, nobody could do anything north or south of him for, you know, five, a few pounds. Um, yeah, so Roy Jones, I completely forgot about him. Floyd Mayweather, like, I mean, I I, I think I'd go as far as to say the, the most effective defensive fighter ever. Because a lot of guys would be so defensive, they stink it up. And he somehow made you interested in the fight, but I mean, possibly, a true master. Yeah. Possibly master. Jack Johnson, where there there's, there's a lot of tape, but it's, you know, real bad, old quality. It's kind of hard, but he was a tremendous all over round fighter, but especially defender. Yeah. 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 Unorthodox. What we would call unorthodox. He's a defense. He was kind of like, uh, I feel like he had a feel for boxing that was really, that he was born with. Uh, I also think then, he's. Guys, oh, go no, go ahead. Guys like Julian Jackson, like, like, like you know, yeah, he, he, his his prime didn't last that long, but he was like Mike Tyson as a 160 pounder. So go ahead, Tom. I was gonna guys. say, I was gonna say about um, uh, Jack Johnson. I think he's the most dominant fighter ever. I mean, he would just hold people yeah. up. Yeah, he would just toy with them. Go 40 rounds. <laughs> toy with them, mock them. You know super brave for the times, you know, everything yep. about him. Um, so, yeah, Willie Pep was a great defender. Uh, yep. So, who, who's your all-time 
your top five of all time, who you think, not your favorite, but who you think are the greatest of all time? Just pick five? Your top put, five. Do they need to be in order or just they're in there? Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, no so order. my greatest, okay. I'm going to put them in order with you. My greatest, uh, I'm going to say Joe Lewis based on how long he held the title. Um, and even though, like, we wanted him to be tested more at times. Like the way he dispatched everybody he was consistent and how often he fought. Um, and I think he proved what he could do um, in a rematch with Jersey Joe and so on and forth, so forth. And he was older and out of his prime at that time. So Max, Joe, Max, you know, Max, yep. And then the guy who carried Joe's bag to the, to the, I think Brewster rec, rec center or something like that, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. Right. So, you know, I think Robinson obviously was, had a lot more going on as a fighter than Joe, but I feel like if he carried Joe's bag, then you, you got to put him next to Joe, one, one step behind. Um, yep. Agreed. I'm going to say Floyd Mayweather, 50-0. and 0, How many world champions he fought. I remember hanging out with Roger one night, and um, we somehow Floyd came up, and um, he was like, you know my nephew? You know when he got his first belt? And I was like, when? He goes, and I was guessing. He was like, no, no, no. And he said, 1998. And like the fact that people, you know, like he's been champion and, you know, and he's obviously retired, but he was champ from like 1998 to like, was it 2000, 16, something like that when he retired, but, and then it was champion and then always fighting world champs. Right. So I'm going to say Floyd and, uh, and his plus minus was nuts. You got to say Roy Jones. I, I'm going to, I'm glad you brought him up because I forget about him. And then my last would be, um, it's tough, uh, right? Chavez. I'm gonna say Chavez because 89 and 0. I mean, he should have lost to Purnell and to Meldrick, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he's a, he's a legend. He, he got he got a decision here or there, but yeah, 89 and 0, and the way he the way he was smooth and could like be aggressive without getting hit, and then turn into an absolute monster. I feel like, yeah, I have him yeah. right above Durant for some reason. So I, I would say Chavez. See, you and me are on the same page. I don't put Ali in my top five. A lot of people do. I don't because kind of what you just said. As a as a human being, yes, but I look at just what you do in the ring, personally. Yeah, and if you look at him in the, in the ring, if his entire career he could have boxed like he boxed in like 1964, 65, if he could have done that and maintained that level of um, attention to detail and athleticism and being in condition, taking care of his body and all that, not getting hit, if he did it the same way Floyd did, then I think he would be in that category. But what he didn't do, and I'm not criticizing him because what have I accomplished, right? This is Muhammad right, Ali we're right, talking right. about. But all I'm saying is um, it's not that he didn't do it. He, he But he there was a lot of fights where he won the fight, but it was so spectacular because he should have – he almost died, right? Like Joe Frazier, all, they almost killed each other. Like that's a yeah. fact. And uh, yeah. those are the fights that they just keep going on for like six more rounds. Someone's dying. Um, you know, and there's, um, the, they had the brothers of Spinks, uh, Leon Spinks, Leon. I believe like Leon mopped the floor with him for a few rounds. There's guys that just beat him, beat him, beat him. And in the last two or three rounds, he comes out like a superhero and wins. So we love him, but he took seven, eight rounds of brutal punishment multiple times. And yeah. I, I think for that reason, if we're just talking about merit, then I feel like some of these other guys you have to bring up because they didn't get beat up like that, you know? I agree. I agree. I put Willie Pep there as well. Um, you know yeah. what he what he did was just tremendous. And and it's weird. Like nobody ever brings up Rocky Marciano. <laughs> there they go every yeah. time. But <laughs> bring up Rocky, but but should you undefeated? Yes, yes absolutely. And he, he fought. I mean, some, he fought some yeah, killers. He did. He did. But he was only. I didn't realize this. You know, he was only champ for three years. I, I didn't know that, but I believe it. Me neither. I, I didn't. I remember. I just remember he retired early, but three years? He was 32 when he retired. Good for him. But back then, 30s was like, even in basketball and a lot of sports, 30s was retirement age in the 80s, yeah. 90s, 70s. Yeah, because those guys fought so often, you know? They fought a lot, yeah. So the, yeah. that's the way that was. Um, who are your current top five? Of current, current, current top five. So I won't put them in any order. I'll try not to, but... Um... Well, I go, we got to talk women real quick. I mean, Clarissa Shields, um, she continues to, like, impress me. 
Um, she's just, I feel like she's so good. She doesn't know what to do with herself right now. She's challenging boys, fighting the UFC. So, yeah, she, um, that she's giving away 100K to some any girl from the street who could beat her. You saw that? I didn't see that. And I was just, yeah. all I'm saying is she's that great that she's bored, bored. Being, yep. <laughs> being the world champion, the most dominant world champion ever. Um, the girl from Detroit, uh, what's her name? Um, Baumgartner. Um, oh, yeah. I love to watch her fight. And then, um, and of course, it was it Katie Taylor and uh, Amanda Serrano. So um, on the men's side, uh, Gervonta Davis, I love a puncher, um, a guy that can, without getting hurt, lose a few rounds to set up a big shot and to have that type of confidence in his power. So I love Gervonta. Um, I think um, Devin Haney, like what happened to him was like absolutely tragic, irregardless of whether it happened for cheating or not cheating. The point is, like, he had to go home feeling like he lost. And um, I hate that for him. But one win doesn't define real champions. And so I feel like he's still one of the most talented fighters out there. And I love to watch him fight. Uh, I really do. When he's when he's not trying to beat up the person and, like, be aggressive and he just sits back and box, boxes, it's one of the most amazing things I, I've seen in recent days. Um, then we have to, the guy from Japan. I can never pronounce his name. Inuway. Inuway. Yep. <laughs> um and then we have Terrence Crawford, I probably put right at the top, um, based on skill. Um, based on accomplishment right now, I would put Usyk right above him. Just because, honestly, because he's a heavyweight, right? I'm, 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 um, I'm partial to heavyweights, but also the fact that he got the lineal title. He beat a man 60, I'm sorry, 40 pounds heavier than him. Um, that's six foot nine, five inches taller. Um, like no other weight class really has to ever do that, <laughs> and I think there that and he's got all the belts. So I I don't love his style, you know. As a like I, I like guys that bang and throw a big right hand and all that, but right. um, but I have so much respect for him, and uh, I'm trying to study kind of how he approaches it. So Usyk, Terrence Crawford, Inoue, I'm sure I mispronounced that. Oh, you Tank, got it right. You got it right. Tank and uh, and somebody else I mentioned, but those are. The people I, I really look forward to watching. I would, I would throw in Benavidez. Most people don't, but I would. Um, it's a good point, and I think it's based on very based, very much based on merit and how he won some of these fights. So I agree. You got to so put him in there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't um, mention Canelo just because I just feel like that that the pound for pound crown doesn't really mean anything to him right now. He held it for so long, and if he wanted to get focused on being the best and fighting the best right now, he could. But I think he's focused on getting what's due to him, you know, the paydays that he can get because he's so great. And I think he deserves that. But pound for pound, it's if he wanted it, then I would say he's number one. But that that's I don't think that's where it's heads at. And I'm mine would mine wouldn't be either. <laughs> so I get it. I'm with you. I mean, yeah, Canelo, Bivol, better be of those guys are also, you know, notable mentions, right? Yeah. Um uh, so you saw the Usyk fight, and you think Usyk because it was a little controversial. It was close. You think Usyk definitely should have won that fight? No, no, I'm not going to say that. I think. Um, do I think there's a strong argument that he won the fight? Absolutely, right. Um, but me, um, I look at in that fight, even though Usyk has all the belts, I wish I had all the belts, and I would be happy having all those belts that he had. <laughs> but to me, just as a boxing historian, a purist, and a fan. Tyson Fury is the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. He has that lineal title, and he's got the WBC strap. To me, he's the guy that deserves to be in the position where the other guy has to take it from him, right? So did Usyk do enough to take it from him? Well, I think I scored round one for Fury for sure, round three, four, five, six, right? So that's five. I think you could argue he won round two, but maybe not. But let's just say he did. There's your six or – didn't he win seven and eight? Wasn't he whooping his ass up until that punch landed? Seven is when he slowed down. So I think he won seven, right? So if he won one, three, four, five, six, seven, that's six rounds, right? And then you just have to be convinced that he won one or two more rounds, right? He and won it's even, 12. Even, it's a even, sure. it, he won 12, so there's seven. And, um, and you know, the other boy would have got five rounds, plus he got the knockdown, so you have an even fight. And then I felt like Tyson Fury had about one point. 114, 113. That's and I thought, I thought it was very clear. George, that's exactly how I scored it. 
Yeah, that's how it scored. Literally, 114, 113 by one point. But just like you said, here's the problem. The optics that we were left with, the second, you know, third of the fight was Fury just being chased down by this guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why, Why do you think a man that big who showed that he can use his weight and size when he fought Wilder, why do you think he decided to not use his weight and size against this this this, this fighter? Instead, he just was constantly retreating. I think, yeah, I think he knows how to do it, and I saw him do it in spots. He'd grab and kind of hold and push down and beat him on the body on the side, but not much. The, and, and that was kind of, it. and then he he would just let go. And I I saw him do it twice, and I said that's what he needs to be doing right around round seven when he got saddled. He got a little tired, which happens around that time, especially for heavyweights. And so, um. But I think if you look at him coming in, he looked really lean. He was 262, and he looked really – he looked leaner than we've seen him in a long time, which I think means he had a decent amount of muscle mass on. Um, so he's really like a 255 version of Tyson Fury. And um, it doesn't look like he trained to bang. It looked like – and especially the way he was dominate, dominating rounds three through six, like complete utter domination, um, especially like rounds five and six. To, for him to be that sharp, that means how, that's how he was training. Stick and move, stick and move, grab, turn, uppercut, stop him, put, turn him, and just move. And that takes a lot of energy. But it doesn't look like he trained to bang. It just doesn't. And I think if he had, he would have come in a little heavier. And um, had he had that, he would have fully taken advantage of being a big man. And uh, he, he didn't use that piece. And 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 I think the, the secret to success would have been balance. Do a little bit of the boxing, but then lean on his ass. Um, yes. Why do you think? Let's go. What right? And Fury. I mean, Fury did it to Wilder. Why do you think do Fury chose not to use his size, though? I know you don't know uh, what that, that. That that I don't know. I will say, I would if I would guess. Remember, I'm talking as a fan. I'll talk as a fighter real quick. I would guess. Um, I really believe as a fighter, if you don't spar a certain way, you're not going to be able to turn it on in a fight, even though you've been doing it all your life. Like the most recent sparring, that's what you're going to naturally want to do in the fight. And so why didn't he strategically think he had to do that? He was probably beating guys at, in, the, in the gym that he felt were as good or maybe better and dominating them with that movement and, and so on and so forth. And But you didn't have a guy like Usyk that decided he was just going to die that night <laughs> and drop his hands and stop covering up and then just start throwing bombs on you for six rounds after you've humiliated him. He probably yeah. didn't have a guy like that with that type of heart in camp so i'm sure it worked for him in camp and i'm sure they had good reasons because he's a smart guy he's a millennial champ he's smarter than me at boxing um and more experienced but you know you just there's always an x factor with another guy in the ring that's a champion you know yeah man no that that, that that's you don't great know what insight. he's gonna do that's great insight i pick him to win in the rematch but i also picked him to win the first fight so i could be you got him in the rematch or how do you see that happening <laughs> I have him in a rematch because I think, you know, it was a lapse in if, if he trains, it was a lapse in focus. And there was that strategic error of not using his body. Two things that he can do really well, right? Um, and then I think they'll be ready. Like if you look at round six, you know, that was the last of the rounds. Usyk had his binoculars on, both hands up, just walking up and kind of just standing mm-hmm. there. Round seven, he made a stark, a very major adjustment. That was a stark contrast to that where he took his hands down to mid chest and just started letting them fly and not caring whether he got hit or not. Um, and doing it with a lot of energy and gas. And I think they'll be ready for that, that, um, that adjustment. So they're ready for the adjustment. He's more physical, stays focused. Um, and he, you know, Tyson Fury, six foot nine, he is a bigger man. I think he wins that. The question is, does, does he need that? Should he just retire and keep the, <laughs> the $300 million he made in the past three years? Chill I out. don't think, I don't think there's any way in hell he's retiring. I think I he's going to – yeah, I don't think he's going to retire. I think they're, they're going to fight in, in October. And, you know, he was retreating the whole fight. So, Usa, you know this from being in the ring. When somebody is constantly uh, retreating from you, even if they're clip, even if they're tagging you up as they're moving, it almost powers you up and you keep chasing them. Like It's psychologically like, oh, they're running from you. Yeah. So – that's why he was just able to – and it's harder, as you know, to, to land punches with any authority when you're on the back foot. So oh. that's why I think Usyk, just like you said, dropped his hands and just started going at him. Um, I think that uh, – I feel like they, they could see that he was slowing down and getting a little bit tired. Um, 
but yeah, also Usyk's just special, man. He really is a special type of beast. <laughs> He is. He absolutely is. And I'm, and, and I'm happy he, you know, he got his decision. I'm happy for him, happy because he earned it, and it wasn't like an upset. It was just close, you know. So it was close, and I don't. Even though I had Foreman, uh, Foreman, Jesus. Even though I had a, a Fury. Fury thing by one point, I don't argue it going the other way because it was super close. Yeah, super you know, close. super super close. Um, okay, well, I guess before we wrap it up. Well, What's your goal in boxing? Like, if things can play out the way you want it to for you, how would that look? Uh, I want to be heavyweight champ. Um, that's my goal. And um, I'm, not, I'm not putting myself in a, a rush. Um, should the fight opportunity come, I'll take it. Because, you know, that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, opportunity whenever it happens. But, you know, my goal is to stay focused for another 18 months. That'll be three years since I started my comeback. And, you know this time next year be ready for a, a fight of that caliber which means i gotta fight just to get slowly get sharp again and, and then improve on my skills i probably have to fight four to five more times this year um and then the beginning of next year really step it up um and challenge you know myself and the team that me and my work uh, the work that me and my team are putting in so uh that's it be ready for it be ready for a title shot um by next summer but also be as close to being ready as possible so i can take the opportunity if it comes wow yeah that, no, that's a good plan so fight three four more times and then start stepping up the level of competition right yeah yeah that's smart yeah. smart um do any of your other siblings box uh i have a brother george the fourth he does a little bit of boxing he's had an exhibition um he, he's an athlete you know first and foremost uh great wrestler great football player so it's a recreation for him but I'm sure he'll probably do it once or twice more in his life. He really loves to compete. And then that's I have your... another, bro another brother who does jiu-jitsu, and that's really it. Wow. And was your dad um, supportive of you guys boxing, or did he not want you to? And I had a sister who boxed many years ago. She was the first one of us. Um, you know, my dad, he's like, he's not going to encourage it. He's not just going to wake up and say, hey, I think I want you to be a boxer. He's definitely not going to do that or, or pressure us. Um, if we show interest in competing, he just discourages it because he's like, you know, I had no choice. That's how I could pull myself out of poverty. You guys have choices. You have college degrees and experience and relationships. So I'm going to discourage you first. Um, but at which point he realizes that we're going to do it no matter what. Then he provides all of his support. Um, that's great. That, that's the type of guy he is, and I really appreciate it. That's great. And he's, you know, he has all his faculties. He, you know, he – handed down way more punishment than he received but he has all his faculties you know and that that's great yeah you know it's it's, 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 a, tough, it's a rough sport yeah yeah it's a tough one <laughs> it's a tough one um all right well hey man look i appreciate you talking to me um let's, uh, you, let's again soon all right great chatting with you take care all right, man. take care peace